Hi there, my name is Mr. Doyle and this is a great undertaking. In this video, we will be looking at the 2019 Creepshow series from the streaming service Shudder, and specifically at the first episode from the series Grey Matter, which is based on the short story Grey Matter from Stephen King's Night Shift. As a fan of the original Creepshow movies, which King was a writer for as well, I was very excited when this reboot was announced. History and Background The original Creepshow movie was released in 1982, which is coincidentally the year I was born, and was an homage, 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 an homage to the classic EC horror comics. Like its predecessor, this reboot, and specifically the episode for Grey Matter, retains the look and feel of that era. The Creepshow reboot was announced in 2018, and Greg Nicotero, who is best known for being an executive producer, special makeup effects supervisor, and primary director on The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, directed the Grey Matter adaptation, and the screenplay was written by Byron Willinger and Philip de Blasi. Filming took place in February of 2019 in Atlanta, Georgia. The series and this episode debuted in September of 2019, and the show was renewed for a second season, which has of course been delayed due to freaking COVID. The show features two stories per episode in approximately 40 minutes, so the Grey Matter adaptation has a short and sweet 20 minute runtime. Is it by the book? While this adaptation takes a different approach, the guts of the story remain intact. Here is a brief summary of the short story. Grey Matter is not just a horrific monster story about a man transforming into a semi-gelatinous blob creature. It is that, but more so it's a critique of addiction and the resulting downward spiral that substance abuse can cause. It's the message and not so subtext that make this a powerful story, but it's equal parts thoughtful and gruesome, so it has a nice balance. There is one immediate difference between the short story and the Creepshow adaptation. Rather than a snowstorm, the town is in the grips of a hurricane, but outside of this one distinct change, this adaptation is as close to being by the book as it gets. There are some minor changes to a character or two, but this is barely noticeable unless you have read the story immediately prior to watching the episode, which I have. The short story takes approximately 30 minutes to read, so the 20 minute episode doesn't have to pad its runtime or invent additional scenes or storylines. It's as if this story was tailor made for being adapted to this format, and I'm sad that the Creepshow reboot only does one episode based on a King story. Soundtrack and Score The score alternates between subdued piano melodies that are tucked away in the mix to more forceful, discordant swells of detuned strings that slide and ebb in pitch and velocity. There is also the ever-present sound of the hurricane behind everything, which provides a sort of constant white noise that shrinks and grows in volume and ferocity. While they aren't necessarily reinventing the wheel with this approach, they manage to pay tribute to the era of films that inspired Creepshow without being lazy about it. Cast and Acting Giancarlo Esposito, best known for his role as Gus Fring in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, plays Doc in this adaptation. I'm impressed that they managed to land such a high caliber talent for this series, especially considering Fring is very much in demand and has been for about a decade now. Esposito, unsurprisingly, does a great job in this adaptation. Tobin Bell, best known for his role as Jigsaw in the Saw movie franchise, plays the police chief in Grey Matter. He and Esposito make an excellent pairing, and despite being in his late 70s at the time of filming, Bell brings an energetic and intense performance to the show. Finally, actress Adrienne Barbeau does an incredible job as Dixie Parmalee. Barbeau has an insanely long list of film, TV, and even video game credits, and while she isn't a household name, she is a gem of an actress. Special Effects 
The special effects, while they don't get the scream time I wish they did, are phenomenal. Using a combination of puppetry and CGI, what we do get to see of the story's gruesome creature is ghastly, horrific, and disgusting in the absolute best way. Considering Nicotero was hands-on with the creature effects, this is no surprise, since Nicotero was a student of the greats, George Romero, and the infamous Tom Savini. Nicotero worked in Day of the Dead with both Romero, worked on, worked on Day of the Dead with both Romero and Savini, who are also the respective director and special effects artists for the original 1982 Creepshow film, and were involved as writer and an actor, respectively, in the 1987 sequel to Creepshow, Creepshow 2. Final thoughts. I absolutely loved this episode of Creepshow, and while part of me wishes it were longer, there... <sighs> That is only because I was so happy with the adaptation that I wanted more. That's something I can't say for at least 95% of the Night Shift-based screen adaptations. They nail it in virtually every aspect, and I genuinely hope that Season 2 of Creepshow brings more King adaptations along with it. Alright, that's it for the Night Shift series, which turned out to be a lot of content to cover. I hope you'll check out the entire Night Shift playlist on my channel, as well as all of the other videos for King's earliest novels, film adaptations, and more. And up next, we'll be talking about one of King's most well-known and renowned novels, The Stand. Okay. Goodbye. Be sure to click like and subscribe to the channel for my continued analysis of all things Stephen King, pretty pleased with blood and guts on top. My name is Mr. Doyle, and this has been a great undertaking. <laughs>